All right. Welcome to today's workshop or presentation rather, because we will be talking about strategy co-creation and Du Nigroup is one of the guests. In particular, we're talking about Marielle Noble. She's the former executive vice president and strategic development at Du Nigroup. Welcome, Marielle. Thank you, Elizabeth. It's really nice to be here. It was quite a journey. And yes, it took a, a, a bit about six months or a bit more, actually. But yeah. uh, very challenging, but also extremely fun uh, to work with this. Yeah. And setting a strategy for 2030, but more importantly, uh, where sustainability became fully integrated uh, to the future. For sure. Should we start by talking a bit about what Dooney Group is? Yes, uh, I think it's a good start. So uh, Duny Group uh, is a leading creator of sustainable and innovative concepts for the set table and takeaway. So essentially products that are on the table, so napkins, table covers and candles in various shape forms uh, and of course design, but also number of qualities. But it's also into packaging and packaging systems for, for takeaway. So anything uh, where you eat and dine and enjoy food, basically, uh, is doing a group. Today, the, the group has about 2,200 employees around 21 countries, uh, and that's more, it's also a listed company on NASDAQ. It's just more to um, to make you understand the size of the company and, and uh, what it took for us to involve different stakeholders and so on across the journey. So... So Duny Group, we came from a very solid history and we had created a lot of good value uh, <clears throat> coming into this journey. Uh, we also had a very solid business. So a bit what you were talking about before, Elizabeth, we certainly had a business to take care of uh, while we were setting on this journey. Good quality product, good market relations, and it, certainly a lot of know-how uh, in, in our field, which we will later see played a vital role in, in many of our strategic decisions. We also actually uh, were not, we were very European focused, but in the last years, we had also established a good business outside of Europe, especially it unsupported by the uh, initial acquisition of the Biopack brand. Yeah. So it wasn't, um, it wasn't really anything that was bad, but we also saw uh, fairly early on uh, in 2020, especially during the pandemic, that the world was certainly changing a lot. And it really pushed us to uh, setting this more bold strategy. Um, and of course, we were challenged by two things, uh, both uh, behavioral changes and expectations, but mainly from the sustainability perspective. But we also decided very early on in this process, and it's definitely true, that instead of seeing it as a threat, we had to act. And, and really, we had a lot of opportunities, uh, which came out in this process as well to act on. So not being afraid and tackle it head on. Yeah, there was a lot of creativity in that, wasn't it? Definitely. Yeah. Uh, a lot of good discussions. Absolutely. But this was what it looked like, right? This was what it looked like. Um, we, um, of course, uh, saw the, there was a lot of EU legislation coming our way, which will impact us on single use. Uh, and we had to embrace that. Of course, the digital revolution is not over, but rather that both sustainability and digitalization were key mega trends that would impact our business. And they needed to work together to solve the problem. Mm. Um, and of course, then uh, something we discovered that we maybe lacked was a clear purpose and vision guiding us down for the future. Who would we want to be? And, and how did we take that uh, then into action later on? So uh, sustainability uh, wasn't new to us. It's been a vital part already since uh, the 1990s and had been accelerating. But uh, we had not been an integrated part of our core strategy until we set out to do so in 2020 and 2021. So you can say that it was an intensifying, we intensified all, all the actions in 2020 and really made it possible to be part of a core, you'd say. All right, mm -hmm. but there was one challenge here, right? Yes. Uh, when we applied together with you, Elizabeth, the uh, the framework and really looking into the why, what, who, where and how, which it, in, in itself maybe in, in a way sounds quite simple, but actually doing this exercise took quite a lot of time. And of course, the, uh, the years here, 2010 and 2020, things happen, of course, every year. Uh, but just to take a standpoint, we tried to put this down and we realized that we didn't really have a clear answer to the 2030 that was aligned throughout the organization. And that's really what we needed to create, uh, a clear purpose. Uh, that was the beginning of the journey in, in, in a lot of ways. Yeah. 
we also had some key questions, of course, uh, both from uh, from from us ourselves, but also from the board and, and some that we wanted answers to. So one was, of course, sustainability. So what was it for us, really, in the future? Uh, the legislation we felt we needed to get a better grip on, uh, and how could we be more proactive in this, of course. Uh, next to that, and very closely aligned, was the relevance of our offer, of course. We were selling, um, and still are selling, um, single-use products that were not necessarily bad, but we think that we needed to do something in this line or economy to move it into a circularity. So how could we renew that, the business that we were in? And of course, how how would we tackle future bets and new business? What what would be the strength and where do we want it to play in the future? So these were the three main questions leading us into this work. Mm -hmm. And here was the journey, right? It was the journey, very condensed, of course. Uh, also uh, a lot uh, in the help of you and the creation then at the time with your book, <laughs> Elizabeth. And mm. the finding a process was very key to doing this. And of course, a lot of things also had to happen in parallel. Uh, reality is never as uh, tidy as a PowerPoint. But of course, we had a kickoff. Uh, we, of course, analyzed a lot of where we were today, but we also spent a lot of time on future scenarios and trends. And one thing I can say is at the time, some and the organization was sometimes a bit questionable why we spent so much time here, but it has shown later on, and especially now that the, the strategy has been alive for some time, that the, from these workshops, many of the answers that we took from there has actually been vital to, to um, to decision making today. Mm -hmm. So I would say that that was good and well spent time. Uh, after this, of course, we created the, the new purpose our values and the actual vision. We'll come back to that. Uh, we also um, actually had very linked to that was the strategic choices. And it's hard to say we went Which with this in parallel, mm -hmm. but actually it was the strategic choices that nailed the purpose in the yeah. end. Yeah. Then, of course, you had to be worked into business plans, financial plans and alignments. Uh, and of course, after this, also a rollout and, and uh, working with the strategy into action. Uh, yes. but, but on a high level, this was the, the strategy, of course. Yeah, we and with. need to be pointed out, too, that there were several alignments with the board along the way, right? Absolutely. And, and several mm. members of, of the total organization, actually. But we Absolutely. Come back to that. But, Absolutely. Yeah. Mm? Yeah, so speaking of which, of course, mm -hmm. you have to organize the work in, in some way or another. Uh, we found a way that we worked in different streams uh, and uh, all the streams together and the stream leads formed a, a strategic office that we worked with and uh, together with the group total group strategy then, which I was leading. Uh, and the different from, from our company perspective, we have the business area. Uh, we also created a, a stream for future best and innovation and new business. Uh, we had sustainability as its own stream, and of course, one could say that why there should be in every, but at this point in time, it was important to really missile out what we can do in the sustainability area. That was then taken, of course, as an integrated part in the next steps into the different streams. Yeah, People and it's and, culture, it, yeah. and a sustainability focused a lot in the stream, speci specifically on building a solid foundation, actually. <clears throat> yes. Which was needed. Mm. <laughs> Absolutely. The same with people and culture, but we yeah. started that also as, an, as its own stream, also mm -hmm. to really show its importance. Um, commercial model, logistics, and then, then of course, uh, at the end, we created, of course, it had to be closely aligned with the financial plans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So uh, taking us uh, back a little bit then, so how, how we work this, I think it was really important, again, using some of your models that we, we spent a lot of time on what are we today? Uh, we also looked a lot into the ecosystem, so the world around us, our, our suppliers, our customers, and everyone that we actually influenced already uh, now. And of course, we also looked at the world and the mega trends. One of the main things that we found out in the different workshops we had looking at the ecosystem and the world around us was, of course, that this, this really impacts us, that we have to go from the liner economy all the way through to the circular economy in the future. Uh, and we had to support our current business in this. But we, as I said before, we really saw this as an opportunity and it was definitely also fueled by the digital transformation. And we had to make this go hand in hand. And we also realized that we had uh, a lot of smaller players around us that maybe would not have the resources to adapt to the change, which was also actually will be a major opportunity here to really 
manage this change in a good way. Yeah. We looked into, as I said, the legislation, the, one of these first pictures you saw, it was important for us. And we also discovered, um, or saw, of course, that this has also evolved over time and could also give us a good idea of where this would be heading in the future. So digging into what this exactly meant and how we could be proactive here was for us uh, very important. And I think the word resilience is, is important here uh, at the end. Yeah, and there is a lot going on on the legislation side for in the EU at the moment. So it's important for any company, actually, yeah. to be aware of how that impacts their specific ecosystem, right? And to not be reactive, to be proactive. Exactly. Now, this landed in something really important. Yeah, so as I said before, maybe one of the most important parts in this whole process was to make some strategic choices. And, and I think uh, at the time, it was important, but we hadn't re we re didn't realize uh, how important these uh, set of strategic choices were until much later, and actually still today. This is a part that we keep going back to, <laughs> mm. and realize that some decisions are much easier today than they were at the time. So the first uh, choice may be seem very simple, but uh, we wanted to create a better future, inviting others uh, to collaborate with us, and that we couldn't solve everything ourselves. And we had always collaborated uh, with Indian Group, but I think from this point onwards, we have really accelerated that and have been less afraid to really open up and um, and um, find new partners and, and and sometimes ask for help uh, mm. in this. That's opened up a lot of different uh, and new opportunities. We also decided that we wanted to be a trusted circle and sustainability leader for the Horeca customers and consumers. So basically what this means is that we wanted to stay in the playground that we were already in. And that was a very important decision as well. So staying within the food industry, hotels, catering and restaurants. But the, the, yeah, the market that we knew well, we felt that we can do more for them uh, rather than trying to launch into new areas in that mm -hmm. sense. We also decided that we would like to continue to go to market in the same way when maybe that sounds like, okay, so you decided to do nothing. No, uh, we also realized that we had to be much better digitally enabled in that, uh, but that we had a good and unique model. And again, our relationships to our market was very important. We also decided that we wanted to offer both products and services um, and also both single use and reuse uh, based on what was best fit for the occasion. And actually, we have also gone further today to say that this could be more. It may we know, not know what it is today, but we don't have to be. We should actually offer what is the best sustainable solution fit for purpose. Hmm. And we also said that we want to explore new opportunities based on our customers' needs and everyday problems. And that yeah. might also seem very simple, but it also we have decided that. So every time someone has a good idea, then we should explore it, basically. Mm. And you actually also installed an organization for that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So we established this framework of core growth and new business. Um, so deciding what each of this part of role they should play in the company going forward. And of course, then new business could be both completely new initiatives or eventually new uh, subsidiaries or something else, but it could also fuel the growth and the core business. Mm. Uh, but it was important to point it out to make it happen, basically. Yeah. Uh, so what type of difference did this make? I think it made... And it makes a lot of difference, uh, um, especially when we then later on looked at how to set up strategic plans and business plans and so on. So what should each area focus on? Where in this are they? And consequently, how much money should we spend on them? How much uh, projects should we have here? How should we balance this, transform, perform? But also for the total business to ensure that we had activities in all parts and not just in one part, because it is very easy when after a year goes by or two years go by and yeah things are always happening that we focus on here and now only for example or only on the future which would be a good idea yeah and there is an organizational part of it also right to try to, try to hmm. keep them apart actually yeah uh, to do what they're intended to do exactly to so protect each and them. every yeah. area's business plans and and uh, and actions can actually be taken back to these three basically yeah yeah very important all right. So 
Ja, tada. Tada. <lacht> <lacht> uh, ja, after uh, much consideration and many workshops and discussions, but still kind of in the beginning, uh, because it was important to set this after the strategic choices, uh, we, we came to the conclusion around our purpose, which uh, is to inspire the world to give more than we take, to enable all people to enjoy good food, well-being and togetherness today and for generations to come. Um, and this, for example, you can see the strategic choice by staying in the market that we already knew and well, we wanted to have good food and well-being and well-being for us here was not just um, that it was more hygienic or anything like that. It's also that people feel good by being able to meet and we often meet around food and drink, for example, so it has a lot of meanings. Um, we set a vision and, and in, in our case, we decided to time it and we had no mission. <laughs> Uh, so uh, mainly to make it almost as a, as a very tangible goal then. So we decided that in 2030, we should achieve full circularity. Bold. <laughs> it was bold. Very bold. Yeah. And that we should passionately lead our industry towards a world where we give more than we take. And of course, here we, we, we had an intention of what in your book is the, the, the steps and looking at regenerative business eventually. But we have also realized that it could also start here and now because we can always give more than we take. We can do that uh, internally. We can do it with customers. We can do it with suppliers. We can be open up to new partnerships and give energy to the world. So it doesn't have to be only the end goal. Hmm. And then, of course, if we care for our planet and our well-being, we create joyful, safe and easy to use solutions for people to embrace food, togetherness and design. So, again, taking it back to also the business that we had in 2020 and still have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we also checked out the values or worked with the values, right, in the process. Yes, yeah. and that's, of course, very important so that behaviors follow the purpose. Uh, and the organization were very much part of this work as well. Uh, and yeah, what we finally um, landed in, I think, is very good that we care, we make a difference and we are passionate. Yeah. And I think also um, all of the three of them, of course, playing very much together it's hard to make a difference if you're not not caring or are passionate vice versa yeah what i thought was interesting here is this this was actually a stream that started out not coordinated by us uh but by hr and mm -hmm. that that created some problems down the road um that also involved the organization actually C can you name a few things about this what happened and how should we have done it do you think from the beginning? Um, yeah, I think of course maybe it would have been slightly easier to start it together with all other streams and the work. Uh, of course, maybe preferable once the purpose was set. <laughs> uh, this but... process was started out by HR yes. before the strategy yes. started out. Yeah. Yes, and and not by any bad intentions. Uh, no, not at all. It, mm. it was more um, because they, it, it was a need in the organization. Yes. Mm. But I think in the end, um, it's always hard to keep track of such a large process in a in a company with so many countries and, and people involved. But in the end, I think it is uh, very much aligned. We had time for that and, and also we also got a lot of input from this work into creating the purpose. So it wasn't necessarily wrong in the end. Uh, but of course, it may have cut time <laughs> had we done it in another way, of course. Yeah, it was just an interesting learning mm -hmm. to see yeah. how you know how how you put the different pieces of the puzzle together. Yeah. Um, I mean, in, in the perfect world, you would have started with um with um the future and um, and, and ensuring the here and now, the ecosystem and the future and, and setting mm. the, the long-term goals, vision and purpose. I think. Yeah. But then it fused seamlessly at the end um, mm. after yeah. some discussions. I mean, yeah. it came together in a good process and mm. I, I, uh, I think this is very much uh, alive in the organization yeah. and feels that it's, uh, it's well um, thought through. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Yeah, we created this house um, a little bit for everyone, uh, making it easy for everyone to follow. And if you start a new in the company and so on, where the purpose is at the, the bottom of the house, because that's uh, as we saw at the foundation, we had our values. That's how we want to act and behave. We have our brands. And of course, we have our vision that we're all working towards uh, for 2030. Mm -hmm. We can do this in many ways, I'm sure. But um, it, it's um, I think it's a picture that's been very easy to to show and to understand and to explain to the organization yeah yeah it simplifies for sure you also mm -hmm. had another help here in the tree mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah eventually we we decided to form a tree uh which uh, represent the, the trust the trusted sustainability leader that we wanted to be 2030 that was the but, goal uh, yeah that was the goal um but we needed to make sure that we worked in different uh, main areas and those we, we decided to be position, innovation, customer operations and people and culture. Mm -hmm. uh, and where we then later aligned <laughs> into different portfolios and programs and projects uh, into these areas and always make sure when we start something that we make that it's definitely to connect it to one of those five areas. So it always has a strategic connection. Uh, mm. anything and action we start and that is aside from our actual operational organization so it means that um, any organization in within the company can have actions within all five of these areas actually mm. it's of course so that more actions in people and culture are in people and culture and and more in, um, in the commercial are in customers but it's not only in that way yeah that's right <clears throat> so yeah, this is an example of what happened on the sustainability side, goal-wise. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, so the sustainability stream set up an, a number of high-level uh, sustainability goals that was also worked through uh, more um, more in, into actionable uh, goals and later actions, uh, which was then uh, taken care of in each of the different streams and areas, as you saw on the, the other side, so the making sure that sustainability is integrated everywhere. Uh, but by itself, so to say, we also needed to be sure that what is our overall sustainability goals. Um, that's what we set here. Hmm. So being the trusted sustainability leader in your industry, number one, was actually something that was actually massaged in on this level hmm. um, as well. Absolutely. Hmm. Absolutely. Hmm. Now, and we also did a cross check. Mm -hmm. Exactly, um, we did, and then it's one of the steps uh, that I was talking about before. Yeah, um, to ensure that we really um, weren't just um, doing things in one area or not in the other. We also, once we were more done with the strategic work and some of the actions and plans, we also went back to have a cross-checking that we have actions in all of these three parts. It doesn't mean that we do all of these uh, parts already, but that we have actions to move into that area and not just uh, in Explore and Innovate, for example, or only in Upgrade our ecosystem, but that we have actions in all areas. Yeah, so it's actually a rather holistic uh, strategy, also from a better business perspective, uh, slowly moving up um, and and becoming more influential in your industry, actually, and even outside. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you saw that in our vision, we hadn't and taken in the world, but it is still the aspiration. That's why also on the highest level, uh, it's there. But we have to start by influencing our ecosystem, for example. Absolutely. Yeah, this is a bit of a final picture. Uh, again, things look very neat and tidy in, in PowerPoint, but we have made an attempt to show where we were in 2020 and where we, under these parameters, wanted to be in 2030. And here you can see that ultimately the main differences lies in the how and in the why by setting a higher purpose that really aligned the organization and the culture uh, moving us there. Yeah, and also somewhat in the what, right, due to... Yes, Going from offering a single more use. circular and, yeah. and more services and so on. So for sure, the what is also important. Um, Absolutely. But we chose to stay on the who, for instance, and there was no big difference in the where either. No, it's more of an, yeah, an adjustment. Digital, yeah, mm. digitally enable it in a better way. Mm. Mm. All right. So 
Yes, um, just to, um, to show that uh, what I just said about the, the areas, we then transfer them into the uh, more maybe traditional uh, three-year business plans uh, that we need to work on. Um, for us, it's usually one to three years. Um, every year goes to upgrade and looking deeply into each area's goals aligned with the, the area and the strategy, um, but also taking it all the way down to action. Yeah. So, Mm -hmm. We learned a lot, didn't we? And you learned a lot too. Yes, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. We learned a lot. And I think I could write an essay about the learnings, but um, we tried to summarize them here. Um, and I think one of the things that were important was to understand the current position, the business and also the culture you were working in. Uh, and I think you cannot have one size fit all. It's really important to know um, yeah, both the business, of course, in itself, but also where the organization is when you start. Mm. And also to spend some time then, as I said, on the long term, uh, external trends and possible future scenarios, actually, and why that makes a difference uh, and taking it on all the way back. So as I said here in the beginning, not everyone felt uh, really that they wanted to maybe spend so much time here. But I later realized that it was important time spent. Mm. Um, focus on the future what we really want to contribute in co-creating and the role that the uh, company can play and also spend some time here because if this is fussy I think a lot of things will later be very fussy <laughs> also mm. uh, it's not it's important not to be afraid of exploring different paths and but in the end make these strategic choices and really challenge the organization, the management, the board to make these choices because it's not until you have to make a choice that you really think about it or else you want to do it all and then you come back to the fussiness. It's easier said than done, but I think it's important. Mm. Then to set desire purpose if you don't have it, I think is important because it aligns the organization and elevates and it also all the way, you have something you can take uh, everything back to, so to say. And this long-term vision and clarity then connected to that, um, not to lose track of that in all actions and plans and whatever yeah. else you also create. <laughs> it's not just about uh, a wanted position. It's also about the way there in the end. Um, <clears throat> the thing is, uh, we don't, if we go back there again, we still don't want someone to run before us to set up the, the actions before you, we actually know where to land. And sometimes yeah. in organizations, I, I actually see that. Um, yeah. And yeah. I think that will always happen. But the more we can um, involve the organization in the work, the more we'll come to that, I think, on the next slide, the more of also, of course, those who are in the leading positions are on board, the less and less that happens. Uh, yeah. But of course, you will never have a perfect uh, process and things also happen, of course. Of course, you need to be adaptable during the process as well. Yes, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, uh, other key learning, and we certainly did, uh, was to have the board and the CEO support uh, all the way and involvement, I think, um, also. Um, and I think the right team uh, working with this, and it is, um, and having attention to it, it, it is um, also vital, actually, that is treated um, with... Um, with the time and the, the energy that it takes to mm. create it. And that's important. And yes, it takes time to create this involvement and this co-creative process. Um, and it takes longer to involve more people. Uh, and sometimes it's tempting not to do so because it is a little bit faster. <laughs> but, to do it on your own. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, or with less people. But yeah. I think it really pays off the more you have involved. But of course, there has to be balance also. Uh, and and there's also ways of involving. You don't have to involve maybe everyone in everything. Uh, some some things are easier if it's set so that you can discuss from there. But and I, a lot of I, preparation necessary. Yeah, yeah. yeah for yeah. sure. Mm. And language is important to keep simple. Mm. I would say mm. also in broad language. Uh, yeah, of course, you have to make it into action. So uh, not forget the operationalization of it and the business plans and the key initiatives and actions and so on, because that's what uh, everyone will later see as, as the actual proof of something happening. Um, 
<clears throat> also not to forget your brands and your values if you're not that's not part of the process it's really important that you really are sure that when you set the purpose that your brands if you have many um are uh, within that purpose uh, so to within say. the scope mm. Mm. and yes mm. once you've done all this uh and i would say it was a huge sort of ah <laughs> but then the actual work starts of course because then you have to roll it out and this transformation journey and then it's to keep track of that with the organization lives uh, the strategy and that there is constant action towards it and i think finally then uh, uh for us it was important uh, that i had the ability to to lead uh and uh could spend time on that i think without it it's also very difficult um and for us to have some external guidance and support that makes made the process a lot easier. Um, definitely really enjoyed working together with you on this, uh, Elizabeth. And we had we had fun too. We had we? fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Yeah. And guidance is important, but also different eyes because uh, having someone that's not in the organization, it's important because you come from a different perspective. Mm. And that's that's also very good to, to challenge. True. Yeah. yeah, and from my perspective, being an outside consultant to having a clear internal leadership is absolutely key to be able to move things. Um, I have been in processes where that has not been clear, and it's much more difficult to uh, navigate the internal um, landscape without that clear in internal leadership. Also, mind you, you've been 12 years with a company, you know the company inside out. Mm. That definitely also helped a lot um, and made it um, a, a quite interesting journey all in all it was it was, it was extremely fun I must yeah say. yeah challenging but fun. <laughs> <laughs> and the two of us has, have spent a lot of time together maybe we should add that we have <laughs> we have online yeah. also. On, <laughs> online yeah online mm. Mm. Oh, right. many hours yeah. many hours indeed and many preparations. Yeah. Many preparations um, and a lot of discussions, both both tough and fun, I have to say. Um, yeah. Some challenging, some uh, very interesting, uh, some very hard. Uh, on the other side, some um, also very rewarding. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and there were times when we felt a bit stuck. <laughs> yep, for sure. Uh, and it was... Um maybe good in the end that we were stuck and had to explore mm. other paths but uh, it's frustrating at the time for sure yeah so uh, what now seems to be a rather simple and clear journey we can summarize that by saying when you start out uh, there is there won't be a clear line or a linear approach to making strategy it's a developmental approach uh, which has many uh, crook what do you say that is uh, crooks and turns maybe yes mm -hmm. exactly um and um you need to be flexible to adjust the process over time and have patience actually because also people steps up um to the challenge uh to co-create what needs to be co-created if you have the overall process uh communicated and mm. and are clear about where you want to go mm. yeah so that was great indeed. And uh, thank you so much for sharing this with us today. I know you have something you just want to share with us at the end. It's a bit of a quote here from Dan Mullen. <laughs> it's just a short quick quote. Um, and of course, uh, if, you, if you want change, then uh, the energy must be on building the new uh, and not fighting the old. And, and as I said, one of the most important parts that we established quite early on was not to feel threatened or um, stressed in a way by the challenges that we saw rather to embrace them as opportunities and then it's possible to build something new yeah. absolutely but new absolutely. can also be renewing what you have it doesn't have to be brand new uh, in that sense I think that's also important that's true everyone can be part that's true so with that I've made this beautiful last slide uh, just for you, Marielle. <laughs> Thank you. It actually originally uh, included hearts, but mm. I felt that maybe uh, a few stars there uh, will be good enough for now. So um, thanks so much, Marielle, for both the journey that we shared and for sharing it with us here today. And we will be talking with Robert Dakisko, who is uh, the CEO um, of Duny Group, 
in a later session and we will, we will be talking more about his approach and the implementation part of it and where you are today and how how he's used this to navigate through the storms in the environment actually i'm thinking about uh, the ups and downs um, mm. as as things have evolved so that will be a really interesting discussion too so thank you